Nobody wins when the family feels. I love you, T. I'm gonna cry you later, bro. I'm about to go lay down, bro. My fucking head hurts, my eyes twitching. <sighs> Shaking and holding it. I just need somebody to call for something, bro. They got us in here. They got their ears full blasting in this shit in here, bro. It's cold. There's no way we all in this bitch wrapped up in blankets, towels, all our clothing on. And it's not this bitch, bro. And the air blast and our full blast. So, uh, we got fucking rights, bro. Person, will you please read the verdict form as marked as to count one first degree felony murder? Deadlock. As to count two first degree premeditated murder? Not guilty. As to count three home invasion first degree? Deadlock. And as you count four, concealing facts or misleading the police. Guilty. Stabbed to death. And so now the state has the option of retrying Mr. Jackson Bolanos on those two charges if they so decide to do that. Will well, they? I'm going to leave that decision for you guys, fam. What I'm going to do, I'm going to try my best to make a full week trial into an hour and 30 minute video. You see, today we're going to Detroit and we have to talk about a man who's accused of M1. He taking it to trial. Imagine going out one night knowing you had no business going out, but you was doing some crime. And in the meantime, you stumble across a dead body. Weeks go by, now police is accusing you as the perpetrator. But that's the story we got here today. So today we're going to court, and we're going to have the opportunity to actually hear from the defendant as he took the stand in his own trial. And most of all, we pay our respects to the victim, talk about who she is, and also help you guys come with a non-biased conclusion. So before we go over this one, I want you guys to remember, I don't give you no angle. I just give you the story. So with that being said, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We're going to jump right to it. Fan meet Michael Bolanos, the man who had been accused of murdering a Jewish synagogue leader who identified as Samantha Wu. May she rest in peace and love and condolences to her family. Michael was acquitted Thursday on a charge of premeditated murder in connection with the Wu's death last year. However, Jackson Bolanos may find himself back in court on other charges related to Wu's murder as the jury was unable to reach a verdict on other charges. Following five days of deliberations, the jury found Jackson Bolanos not guilty of first degree premeditated M, but deadlocked on one charge each of felony M and home invasion. In Michigan, felony M is when murder is committed during the commission of another crime. Wu was found dead outside her Detroit home on the morning of October 21st, 2023, after she was attacked and stabbed multiple times inside her house. After being attacked, police believe Wu was able to get out of her home but collapsed outside. But see, here's where things get tricky, fam. Jackson was arrested and charged in the case nearly two months later, but he denied any involvement in her murder. Of course, you'll later check out his testimony. He testified that he was in the neighborhood the night of the crime because he was looking for unlocked cars to break into. According to surveillance footage you'll later check out as well, he was in the neighborhood. It shows him walking around the time of Wu's murder, but there's no video evidence of him going into Wu's home. Now, Jason Bolanos also had admitted to seeing Wu's body outside her home and touching it before fleeing the scene once he realized she was dead. But Jackson had this jacket. It was found to have spots of Wu's blood on it, and that was their connection. Now, it ended up getting washed, but he didn't have no say-so in having his clothes washed. Now, before I let you guys hear what Jackson Bolanos had to say, check out six minutes of his girlfriend testimony, because then things will start to make sense. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Miss Wade, do you know somebody by the name of Michael Jackson Bolanos? I do. And do um, you see him in the courtroom today? Yes. And uh, can you just point to him uh, and describe where he's sitting for the record? In the middle of the table. Um, Your Honor, if the record could reflect that the witnesses identified the defendant. So no. Um, and ma'am, have you been in a uh, romantic relationship with the defendant for some period of time? I have. And when did that relationship start? Early September. Uh, 2023? Yes. Okay. And um, there's a, there, there was some video that, that has been shown um, and some photos of um, 454 West Alexandria Street. Did, did you live there back in October of 2023? I did. Um, and did uh, the defendant stay with you from time to time? Yes. 
And um, looking looking behind you um, at the screen, um, what's been uh, displayed here is Exhibit 89, uh, page 56 for the record. Are you familiar with that that jacket? Yes. And is that the defendant's jacket? Yes. Well, if I'm going to object to the meeting, please ask all the questions. Judge, uh, under 611B, I, I believe I'm allowed to leave this particular witness. I'll look. Um, Judge, I'll look. And, and ma'am, that, so that, just to be clear, that's, that's the defendant's jacket, correct? Correct. And um, at some point after the date of October 21st of 2023, um, did you wash that jacket? I did. Okay. And um, do you remember when that was that you washed it? Not exactly, no. Okay. But w it would have been, obviously, before the police came to your apartment on November 30th. Yes, I believe it had been about a month or so of time. Okay. In between. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Don't questions. Good morning. Good morning. Ms. White, you've indicated that um, you have been in a relationship with Mr. Jackson Barnes, correct? Correct. And you indicated for the record that you indeed washed this jacket, correct? Yes. Did Mr. Jackson Bolanos ask you to wash this jacket? No. What was the reason that you ended up washing this jacket? Out of habit. We live together, so I do the laundry. Do you regularly do Mr. Jackson Bolanos' laundry? Yes. Has he ever asked you previously to do his laundry? No. Now, let's talk about the date that you did this laundry. Um, where was this jacket when you went to go do this laundry? In the laundry basket. And did you have an opportunity to look at this jacket before you put it in the laundry? Not as far as analyzing, no. Did you see it though? Yes. Okay. When you saw it, did you see anything shocking about this jacket? No. Not did to the see, naked eye. Did you see blood on this jacket? Not at all. Did you see blood on any of the clothing that was inside of that hamper? Not at all. And you indicated that you don't recall when you washed this, correct? Yes but that you are in the habit of consistently washing the clothes in the house, right? Absolutely. Okay. Um, let's also briefly talk about that, the night in question, the 20, 20th slash 21st. Um, isn't it true that you and Mr. Jackson Bolanos have always shared the location with one another? Correct. That location has never been turned off since you guys have been in a relationship with one another, correct? No. So at any point in time, you're able to see exactly where he is. Yes. And he is able to see exactly where you are. Yes. Um. Now, isn't it true that Mr. Jackson Bolanos has previously told you Objection, Your Honor, you're saying. Is your understanding that Mr. Jackson Lamos has not wanted you to do his laundry before? No. Okay. Is it your understanding that um, he has... Is it your understanding that he has, in fact, washed his own clothes previously? In life? Yes. Yes. Okay. So you did this just because you chose to do this? Absolutely. So no part of him that requested this of you? No. Now, on the night in question, or I guess the morning in question, at 5 a.m. on the 21st, when Mr. Jackson Blanos came home, um, did he appear to you to be covered in blood? Not at all. Did he appear to you to look as if he had just gotten into some argument with someone or anything? Did anything appear different about him? Not at all. Okay. Uh, if, had, if there had been something such as this, do you think that you would have had an inclination of it? Yes. Okay. Uh, when he came home that night or any time after that night, did you notice any scars on him? No. Any scratches on him? No. Any wounds on him? No. No, nothing that appeared as if he had been in any sort of fight? No. 
No further questions. Thank you. Fam, Jackson let his girl have it. In a phone call, I'm going to let her play from you guys from jail. It seemed he honestly didn't tell her or knew about her washing his jacket. And when he found out during that phone call, he just went ballistic. But I got to stay on track. Now, it's mentioned, he ended up taking a stand. Now, he explained why he was roaming around. Told them basically he was breaking the law, breaking into cars. And I'm going to stop it when he said he stumbled across a dark figure that didn't move. That ended up being the body of Wu. You Michael Manuel Jackson Bolanos, B O L A N O S. You may proceed. I'm sorry, my thumb drive just fell on the podium. Good afternoon, Mr. Jackson Bolanos. Good afternoon. I'm going to ask you a series of questions and be honest. Now, Mr. Jackson Bolanos, do you remember the night of October 21, 2023? Yes. Okay. Uh, briefly explain how did that night start? I was at Tierra White's house. Okay. And who is Tierra White? My girlfriend. Okay. Um, at some point in time, did you leave the house? Yes. Okay. Um, how did you leave the house? I left on foot walking. Okay. Um, uh, what did you take with you? Um, besides myself, my phone, a lighter and a flashlight. Okay. Did you take any weapons with you? No. Okay. Uh, did you take a knife? No. Okay. Um, so why did you leave the house? Well, I had told her I was going for a walk, but I was actually going to go look at cars. Okay. And what was your purpose to go look at cars? To locate them and see if they were accessible. Okay. And when you say accessible, what does that mean? Meaning like if it was unlocked, I was going to check through the car. Okay. Any specific cars that you were looking for? Mostly Dodges, um, Chargers, and Challengers. Okay. Did you have any plans on actually stealing any cars that night? No, not that night. Okay. Um, if you remember, where did you go first? I walked out of her house and I turned on Cash Street and sat down in front of a pole. Okay, and what were you doing while you sat down on the pole? I was talking on my phone. Okay. Uh, approximately how long? Um, I don't know how long. Okay. Where did you go afterwards? I wandered off um, down Woodward, headed towards downtown. Okay, did you have any particular destination in mind? No set destination, just the downtown area. Okay. Uh, did you have a particular area such as apartment structures, uh, parking lots that you were seeking to go to? No, just the downtown area. Okay. Uh, did you go to any apartment complex? Yes. Okay. Uh, when you went to these apartment complexes, what did you do? Um, I checked out a few cars to see if they were unlocked. Okay. Were some of the door handles unlocked? Yes. Okay. Um, what did you do when the door handles were unlocked? Like I stated, I would search through the vehicles to see whatever I could find. Okay. Uh, were you looking for anything in particular? Just whatever that I found. Okay. Did you find anything? Um, I found the bag on Lafayette when I was coming down Rivard. Okay. Uh, was there anything in the bag? No, just like crumbled up papers, some cordial headphones, um, some gloves and a chapstick. Okay. Uh, what type of gloves? I believe surgical. Okay. Uh, were there any weapons in the bag? No. Okay. Was there a knife in the bag? No. Okay. Uh, did you ever put any gloves on? Oh, those gloves on? Yes. Um... And After I found them in the bag, I took them out, I blew up one, made a hand balloon, and like I put the other two on. Okay, is there any particular reason why you put the gloves on? Well, when I figured I was out for cars and was more than just taking pictures, I was going to eventually touch the door handles, and I didn't want to leave any like fingerprints on the door handles. Okay. Um, what did you end up doing with the backpack at that time? I stashed it in the walkway apparent to the street of Lafayette in some bushes. Okay. Is there any reason why you did that? 
down the walkway, I seen that there were cars in a parking lot, and I wanted to come back and look at those cars. Okay. And what type of cars are you referring to? Just a sort of cars. Okay. I couldn't really specifically see. Were there other things, if anything, that you actually took? Mm, no. When I got the Jefferson, I had one in a car, and it was a plastic bag with, like, candy in it. Okay. And was there a knife in that bag? No. Okay. Did you immediately walk off with that bag? No, I didn't. Okay. And you stated that there was candy in the bag? Yeah, um, I found the candy, but I had dropped the bag when I had heard people approaching. Okay. I'm going to... And do you remember approximately where you got that bag from? Um, a car near the River Place apartments, like in the front on the street. Okay. I'm going to show you People's Exhibit number, I believe it's 78, which is a compilation. and ask you some questions in reference to this exhibit. Uh, Mr. Jackson Bolanos, is this you on this particular camera? Yes. Okay, and what, if anything, are you doing at this particular time? I'll, I'll start playing. I was walking away because I heard those people. Okay. Is this still you at the top of the screen? Yes. Okay. Now, if we pause, is were you noticing anything at this particular time on the video? Um, just that I was about to go around the building to, like, duck off for a minute okay. until the people left. Okay. Um, are those the people who are depicted at the top of the screen? Uh, yeah, it was like three of them. Okay. I'll continue to play. If we pause, um, in your hand, it looks like you have something, I guess, illuminated. Do you have a glove on at this time? Yes, I had on two gloves. Okay. And are these the gloves that you retrieved from the backpack that you yes. found earlier? Okay. I'll continue to play at 435, which is the same moment I paused that. Now, what, what are you doing at this point in time? I was just like hiding, like, okay. you know, just trying to keep clear. And, and, and why were you hiding? Because I didn't want to be caught breaking into those cars. Okay. Just avoiding confrontation, really. Okay. Now, Mr. Jackson Bolanos, you appear to have started walking in a particular area or, or direction, 
and then you turned around. Is there a reason why you turned around? Yeah, like I said, I didn't know if they saw me going into the cars, so I just wanted to, like, get away from the area for a minute until, like, they had left. I wasn't expecting them to, like, get in the car. I thought they had walked down that street. Okay. Did you... Are you know, did you notice this car that pulled out in front of you? Yeah. Okay. Did you know who was in the car? No. Did you think that it could be a possibility that maybe they knew or what you was up to at that time? Objection. Leading. I, I, I asked whether or not if he knew whether or not they knew what he was That's doing. Leading. Okay. Did you know what those the individuals in the car were doing? No. If if he knows. He right. I'll continue playing at forty nine and fifteen seconds. Now, what were you doing at that moment in time? I just didn't want my face to be seen. Okay. So I turned around. Continue playing. Now, where are you walking to at this moment in time? Going back to get the bag that I had dropped. Okay. And just for the record, wh why did you drop that bag? I just was avoiding people, and I didn't know if they saw me going into the car. Okay. And would that be the three individuals that we previously saw at the top of the screen? Yes. Okay. Now, you're holding something in your hand. Um, what is that? That was the plastic bag with the candy in it. The candy in there, okay. Do you know what type of candy it was? Halloween candy. Halloween candy. Was it a variety of candy? Yeah, like chocolates and different assorted kinds. Okay. And, and you, are you walking off with that bag? Yes. Fast forward slightly to 53 minutes. Mr. Jackson Blano, is, is this you? Yes. Okay. You just turned around and looked behind you. Why is that? I heard like tire screeching. Okay. What if, what if anything are you doing right now? I was digging in the bag. Um, just about to eat a few of the candies. Okay. And did you remove candy from the bag? Yes, did I you? ate a couple. Ate a couple. Okay. I'm going to fast forward slightly to.
55. Fifty-five minutes and fifty-two seconds. Uh, Mr. Jackson Milano, is, is this you? Yes. Okay. And what are you attempting to do? I was trying to climb that wall. Okay. And why were you trying to climb the wall? To get up to that parking structure. Okay. And what was your purpose of going to that particular parking structure? To locate different cars or see if they were accessible. Okay. And did you ever make it to that particular parking structure? Yes. Okay. At some point in time, did you leave from that parking structure? Yes. Okay. I'm going to fast forward it a little bit to 57 minutes and 42 seconds. Is this you after coming from the parking structure? Yes. Okay. Did you retrieve any items from any of the cars at this parking structure? No. Okay. But it was your attempt to try to... To do so, yes. Okay. Thank you. I will play at 57 minutes and 42 seconds. Now, Mr. Jackson Blanas, are, are you running away from this particular scene? I was running away from when I was up there. I had seen security patrolling on the street, and then I seen someone walking towards the parking structure. So that ended my, like, searching through the parking lot. I jumped down and just started to like run. Okay. And what was your purpose of running? Just to avoid any contact with anybody. Okay. I'll continue to play. And do you remember where you where you were at this point in time? Um, if you do, by the Enterprise Building. Okay. I don't know what that building's called. Okay. Uh, Mr. Jackson Blanos, um, what are you doing at this point in time? I was running because like again I heard tires and when I was on that street when I grabbed a bag out the tree there was a car that was approaching like fast okay you mentioned you grabbed the bag out the tree did you have that bag on you when you scaled the wall no I had placed it in the tree across the street okay and, and why did you do that to be able to climb the wall okay and you retrieved the bag yes It appeared that you looked behind you after you began to start, stop running. Um, why is that? Well, I stopped running because the car didn't come down that corner. Okay. And what was your purpose of looking over your shoulder? Just to make sure that nobody was following me. Okay. Now, after you left this location, uh, where did you go? Um, I just went back the way that I came, headed back to lights going towards uh, Midtown. Okay. Now, the first backpack that you mentioned that you found in a car on Lafayette, is that in your presence at this point in time? No. Okay. And, and where is that bag at? Just so still in the bushes on Lafayette, okay. adjacent to the sidewalk. Okay. And did you remember where you put it at? Yes. Did you, were you attempting to, when you say you wanted to go back, which way were you going back? To? I was headed back to where I left that book bag to go check out the last little lot. Okay.
I'm going to skip to 39, 39 minutes and 39 seconds. You, rec you, you do recognize yourself in certain photographs, correct? Yeah, but that's okay. not me. Okay. You're stating that this is not you? Yeah. Okay. While you were out walking, did you see anybody who was wearing all black who was walking maybe in your general location? I did. Okay. I'm going to pause this briefly and I'm going to publish people's exhibit number Seventy three. Oh, no, nope. I'm sorry. Seventy four, I'm sorry. People's Exhibit Seventy Four. And I will start publishing at two minutes and fifty one seconds. Now, Mr. Jackson Bellano, is, is, is this you walking on the screen? No. Okay. Just for the record, do you know what color this individual appears to be wearing? All black. Okay. Oops, kind of, went kind of fast. I'll go back 10 seconds. Now this individual who's walking slightly behind this first individual, do you recognize this individual? Yes, that's me. That is you, okay. On the night of October 21st, do you remember seeing the individual who previously walked through the parking lot? Not like right away. Maybe like when I turned that corner, I seen them still walking down that street. Okay, so at some point in time, did you see this individual? Yes. Okay. Um, were you guys, so would it be fair to say that you guys were in the same area at some point in time at night, correct? Yes. Okay. And I will resume on People's Exhibit 78. Now, after making your way from the area where we previously saw you running at, did you make your way back to the area of Lafayette? Yes. Like I said, I had went back to go check out those cars where I left the boot bag at. Okay. Uh, again, clean at 345. In the eight, well, actually, one hour and nine minutes and seventeen seconds was equipped at three forty-five in the a.m. Is, is this you? Is this you walking? Yes. Okay. Now the area of that you stated that you placed this backpack in, 
Did you ever go back to that particular area? Uh, eventually, after I was leaving the lot. Okay. And which lot is that? Um, the one closest to Lafayette. Okay. And were you able to, did you, what was the reason that you went back to that particular lot? Well, I had left the bag there in the bushes, so it was kind of like a reminder to go back, to go back for the bag and look at those cars. Okay, and did you go look at those cars? Yes. Okay. Did you get anything of value from those cars in that location? No. Okay. But did you attempt to? Yes. Okay. I uh, checked these cars out and then down the street a little bit because security was like at the corner, just sitting at the corner. Okay. And, this, and what are you doing right now in this video? Checking the car door handle. Okay. Now, if a car door handle is locked, what, if anything, do you do? Go on to the next car. Okay. Do you attempt to try to break open the window? Absolutely not. Okay. Do you attempt to slash the tires? No. I didn't have anything on me to even do that. Now, are you still checking car handles on different cars? I was. Okay. Now, What time does it uh, depict on the time at the top of this video? 14. Okay. And do you see some type of vehicle that's coming into view? Yes. Okay. Um, did you see this vehicle on the night of October the 21st? Yes. Okay. And in which vehicle did you see? that you see now in this particular video? It was a white security car with a yellow light. Okay. And what, if anything, did you do on this particular, I guess, morning when you saw this security vehicle? I had ran, like, okay. into the parking lot and waited for him to go around. Okay. And, and where were you waiting at? On the sidewalk, like, beyond the whatever you call it, the thing that lifts up the arm. Okay. Did you approach, did you open any apartment doors? Absolutely not. Okay. Were you looking into any apartment doors? No. Did you look into any apartment windows? No. Did you go inside any apartments? No. Now, what happened at some point in time, did security leave your vision, or did you leave their vision, or? Yes, when they left, when they went back around, I had checked out a few of those cars that were aligned this way, like parked this way, and the cars that were parked this way, so down the street of Juliet Place. Okay. And then what did you do next? When there was no cars unlocked, I had went to go retrieve the book bag, but upon me doing that, that was when I saw a dark figure outside. Okay, and what, if anything, was this dark figure doing? Looked like it was ducked down. Okay, and what did you do when you first saw this dark figure? I just like stopped, froze up for a second, just to kind of like wait and see what makes the first move. Okay, 
Did this dark figure ever make any movements towards you? Not at all. Okay. Um, what, if anything, did you do after you waited to see who would make the first move? Well, when it didn't move at all, I just moved towards it. Okay. And when you were moving towards it, before you moved towards it, did you know what that dark figure was? No, just that it was large and dark. Okay. Um, and how far away were you when you first noticed this dark figure? Um, I don't recall. I didn't fully come into like contact yet. Okay. You stated that you started to walk towards this dark figure? Yes. Okay. Um, at some point in time, were you able to, I guess, ascertain what this dark figure was? When I got close enough, yes, I could tell it was a person. Okay. Could you tell it was a male or a female? Not right off the hand. Okay. Um, was this person doing anything? Laying down on the ground. Okay. And what position did you see this person laying down the ground in? With their back towards me. Okay. Um, and did you approach this? I did. did. Okay. And what, if anything, did you do when you approached? I touched the person's neck to see if they were okay. Okay. And... Was the person okay? Did they respond to you? They wasn't okay. Okay. And you said you touched their neck? Yes. Do you know which hand you might have used? My right hand. Okay. And how, why are you sure that you used your right hand? Because I remember. Okay. And did you do anything? Did you shake the body? Did you do anything? I didn't shake the body. I just shaked the neck, put my hand kind of like in between right here. No air. No, like, breath or nothing. So, fam, we're going to stop it there. So far, what you thinking? It seemed like he telling the truth. But the real reason I stopped is, fam, I want you guys to pay close attention. Now, on footage is another man with all black, just like Jackson, that's right before him. And is that the actual perpetrator? Or is that just one hell of a coincidence? Check it out. Like, parked this way. And the cars that were parked this way. So, down the street of Juliet Place. Okay. And then what did you do next? When there was no cars unlocked, I had went to go retrieve the book bag, but upon me doing that, that was when I saw a dark figure outside. Okay, and what if anything was this dark figure doing? Looked like it was ducked down. Okay, and what did you do when you first saw this dark figure? I just like stopped, froze up for a second just to kind of like wait and see what makes the first move. Okay. Did this dark figure ever make any movements towards you? Not at all. Okay. Um, what, if anything, did you do after you waited to see who would make the first move? Well, when it didn't move at all, I just moved towards it. Okay. And when you were moving towards it, before you moved towards it, did you know what that dark figure was? No, just that it was large and dark. Okay. Um, and how far away were you when you first noticed this dark figure? Um, I don't recall. I didn't fully come into, like, contact yet. Okay. You stated that you started to walk towards this dark figure? Yes. Okay. Um, at some point in time, were you able to, I guess, ascertain what this dark figure was? When I got close enough, yes, I could tell it was a person. Okay. Could you tell it was a male or a female? Not right off the hand. Okay. Um, was this person doing anything? Laying down on the ground. Okay. And what position did you see this person laying down the ground in? With their back towards me. Okay. Um, and did you approach this? I did. did. Okay. And what, if anything, did you do when you approached? I touched the person's neck to see if they were okay. Okay. And... Was the person okay? Did they respond to you? They wasn't okay. Okay. And you said you touched their neck? Yes. Do you know which hand you might have used? My right hand. Okay. And how, why are you sure that you used your right hand? Because I remember. Okay. And did you do anything? Did you shake the body? Did you do anything? I didn't shake the body. I just shake the neck, put my hand kind of like in between right here, no air. No, like, breath or nothing. And once I realized that I just touched the dead person, I just grabbed the bag and I left. Okay. 
And what did it feel like? What did the body feel like? Cold and like crusty. Okay. Did, was it wet? Was it dry? Like paint on the wall. Did you attempt to call the police? My first reaction was to reach for my phone, but I had to consider where I was and what I was doing at the time. And I didn't feel like me personally, that would be a good idea to call the police. Okay, and when you said you had to consider where you was and what you were doing, let's just, I guess, break that down a little bit. Um, what, what were you doing in your mind? Well, I was over there breaking into cars. Well, not breaking into cars, but going into motor vehicles. And I felt like if I had to call the police, I would be incriminating myself. Because the first question they're going to ask is, what are you doing over here? Okay. And it would be fair to say that you didn't have permission to go in these people's cars or attempt to open their doors, correct? No, I didn't. Okay. And... You also stated that you had to consider where you were. In your mind, where were you that made you made a decision as to whether or not you called the police? I was in an area where I didn't belong. I don't live over here. And my address is way on the west side, and I'm out breaking into people's cars. Okay. And when you noticed this individual, was it a male or female? Well, when I got close enough after I had touched the person, I could tell it was a female by the amount of hair. Okay. Could you tell their race? No. Okay. Okay, and what did you do next? Well, once I realized the person was dead, I grabbed the book bag out the bushes and I went over by Greek Town, walked past the overtown, like the over... Okay, and how, and how far away was this book bag from this area of the body? So the walkway leaving out the parking lot would have been in these bushes on this side. Okay. And you said you grabbed the book bag from the bushes? Yes. Okay. If you remember, do you remember which hand you may have grabbed the book bag with? No, I don't recall. Okay. And after grabbing the book bag, which direction did you walk to? I was headed back towards Midtown, so I took Lafayette to the service drive and crossed that street where the people were striking at. Okay. I'm going to begin to play at 423 and... 18 seconds as far as time, which is 112 and 38 seconds on the compilation. Now, Mr. Jackson Bellano says, this you with the green circle around you? Yes. Okay. Now, I have a question. Um, if you were avoiding people all night and avoiding confrontation, why would you walk towards individuals where you can... Uh, let me back up. Before you made that right from Monroe, could you see those individuals striking outside? Yes. Okay. Now... You stated earlier that you were trying to avoid confrontation, correct? Yes. Okay. Why would you walk towards these individuals who are clearly outside striking in the cover, not even the cover of darkness, but in a heavily lit, heavily surveilled area? Because I wasn't going into any vehicles at that time, and I had just seen a dead woman laying outside, and I wanted to be around people that were alive.
Now, you didn't discard anything towards the freeway, um, did you? Absolutely not. Okay. And I'm going to fast forward a little bit. I believe it's 4.25 and 23 seconds that's depicted on the time, actual time, but one hour and 14 minutes and 22 seconds on the compilation. And Mr. Jackson Blondes, what, if anything, are you doing right now? I was texting Dr. Washington. Mr. Jackson Blinders, what, if anything, are you doing at this point in time? I flashed the light on my hand because I felt like that crest light drying up. Okay. And did you see anything on your hand? Yes. It was blood on my hand. Okay. And what did you think when you saw that, if anything? I just panicked. Okay. And, and why did you panic? Because I had just touched a dead person. Okay. Did did you kill that person? Absolutely not. Okay. Did you ever enter that person's house? Absolutely not. Did you ever remove any items from their pockets? Absolutely not. Okay. Did you stab Samantha Wall? Absolutely not. I had no weapons on me that whole night. What I'm out there doing, I don't need no conflict, no confrontation with anybody. Did you ever attempt to go inside of Samantha Wall's house and have a confrontation with her? Absolutely not. Did you ever punch Samantha Wall? Absolutely not. Did you notice anything about her door? No, I wasn't paying attention to that. Okay. Did you, I was more so just worried about the security. Okay. Did you see anybody's door open? Not that I re can recall. Okay. Did you peek into anybody's apartment just to look in? The no. Door? Okay. Did you touch anything inside of anybody's? No. Did you twist the door handle? Up? I didn't go near no condos, nobody's houses, except for 454 West Alexandria. Okay. I didn't go in nobody's house. And, and what address is that that you just gave? Tierra White's. Okay. We'll continue to play at 1 hour and 14 minutes and 40 seconds. Now, Mr. Jesse Bellanos, it, it appeared that you began to, you were walking at first and you began to run and to run and then you started walking. Why did you even start running? Just because that panic, like, you know, that emotion of just touching a dead person. Now I got her blood on my hands and I just wanted to, like, get away. Is this you walking um, what appears to be by 36th District Court? Yes. Okay. And at, at some point in time, you make it back home, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, when you went back home, what did you do, if anything? Well... When I called her to open up the door, um, I went in and like washed my hand off. Okay. We'll go to the end, 1.31 and 16 seconds where I'm republishing it.
And just for the record, which hand was it that you um, said? My right hand. Okay. Now, when you made it back home, did you discard any of your clothing that you were wearing that night? Absolutely not. I had no reason to. Okay. Did you notice any thing on your clothes as far as blood or anything? No. Okay. Now, did you instruct anybody to wash your clothes? No. Okay. Did you instruct anybody to discard of any of your clothes? No. Okay. At some point in time, you were arrested, November the 30th, correct? Yes. Okay. And you were questioned by Detroit police, correct? Yes. Okay. When you were originally arrested, what was your understanding as to why you were being arrested? Property crimes, something about some glasses with a pawn shop. Okay. And why did you think that? Why did I think? Yeah, why did you think it was involving property crimes? That's what they told me. That's what they told you? Okay. And what did you think that they were, I guess, insinuating when you're in an interrogation room and they're asking you about glasses in a pawn shop? Well, the type of glasses that they were mentioning are most glasses people either get robbed for or killed for, and I was telling them I didn't do none of that. Okay. And what type of glasses were these? Cartier. Cartier glasses? Okay. Um, just for those who don't may not know what Cartier glasses are. Are these like these just glasses you can buy at CVS or? Absolutely not. Okay. Um, are they high, a high priced item? Yes. Okay. And did you attempt to explain how you came into contact with these glasses? I did. Okay. And at some point in time, the detectives, they asked you about whether or not you do break and entering of cars, correct? Yes. Okay. And what did you tell them? I told them that I wasn't. Okay. Um, was that truthful? No, it wasn't. Okay. And at some point in time, did they ask you about what you were doing on October the 21st? Yes. Okay. And did they ask you whether or not you were walking around the city and checking door handles of cars? Yes, they did. Okay. And what did you tell them? I told them that I wasn't doing none of that. And was that the truth? It wasn't. Okay. And, and why did you lie to them? I have a history of cars, so I figured I didn't want to be in trouble. And I'm already facing habitual status if in trouble with any more cars. Okay, you said you have a history of cars. What do you mean, you had a history of being a mechanic? Or what does that mean? No, like motor vehicle thefts. Motor vehicle thefts, okay. And you said a habitual, what, what does that mean? Meaning like, to my knowledge, um, any new charge with the same crime, I was looking at 25 or more. That's what you thought? Yeah, because I was a third, so a fourth would make me a fourth habitual. Okay, for stealing cars? Yes, sir. Okay. And at some point in time, they started, they presented you with some photographs, correct? Yes, they did. Okay. Um, did some point in time, did you ever admit to at least hitting door handles or checking door handles? I did. I admitted to messing with a few cars, taking pictures of them. Okay. And when you say taking pictures of cars, that particular night, did you take any pictures of any cars? I did. Okay. And how many cars did you take pictures of that night? Um, one that I know of offhand was a Chally because of the specific type and model it was. Okay. You say a Chally. Could you just... A Dodge Challenger. Dodge Challenger. Okay. Um... Was there anything specific about this particular Dodge Challenger that... Most sort out, like, type car. It was a scat pack. Okay. Um, was there anything, I guess, notable about this particular scat pack that you photographed that night? 
um, the entirety of the car and the license plate. Okay, and, and what about the license plate that was, I guess, notable to you? Well, with the license plate, I just send it to the Telegram chat group and they run the information. Okay, and did you send this photograph to anybody that night? Yes. And who did you send it to? To Tierra. Okay, and, and just to be clear, Tierra is your girlfriend? Yes. Okay, and was there, don't tell you, don't have to tell me what the response was, was there a response? Yes. Okay. Do you know who this car belonged to? No. Okay. Did you attempt to check the door handle on this car? I did, but it was locked. It was locked, okay. Did you attempt to break the window of this particular car? No. Okay. Did you slash the tires on this particular car? No. Okay. And during the course of this trial, you saw what I believe is People's Exhibit. Now, just to be clear, was this Challenger, did this Challenger have Coast Guard license plates? Yes. Okay. So, we'll, we'll fast forward back to the interrogation. Um, so, you ultimately admitted to at least opening door handles? Yes. Okay. Did you ever tell them that you removed certain items from some cars? Yes. Okay. Um, what, what did you tell them you removed from the cars? The gray backpack and the plastic bag with the candy in it. Okay. Now, at the end of this video, and I'll go back to... I will start at 1 hour and 13 minutes and 35 seconds. Now, Mr. Jackson Bellanos, um, it appears that you have something on your back. What, what is it? That was the backpack that I had found earlier in the night that I had left in the bushes. Okay. So, so what happened to the white bag that you were previously carrying around all night? It's inside that bag. What do you mean? It's inside the bag. You, I so you pl placed that bag inside that oh, bag. So you're saying that you took the white plastic bag and you put it inside the backpack? Yeah, as I was walking. Okay. And did you put the backpack on your back? Yes. Okay. Just to be clear. Um, so did you eventually tell detectives about you having this backpack and the white bag? Yes. Okay. Were you honest with them at first on whether or not you removed some items from the car? No, because I was just more so in my head worried about being in trouble for the cars itself. Okay. At some point in time, did the conversation shift away from whether or not you went into cars and to whether or not you went into apartments or houses. Yes, um, the Sergeant Ford guy has stated that. Objection. It's your side. Well, if he's saying what he was answering. Yeah. Well, yeah. fine. <clears throat> the Sergeant Ford guy has stated that. He had me in somebody's house, and I told him I didn't go in nobody's house. Okay, when he said that, what, what, did, what did that mean to you when he was saying that he had you in somebody's house? What is Meaning that he said that I was in somebody's house that I didn't go into. Okay. Did you go into anybody's house that night? Absolutely not. Okay. And... How did that make you feel when he said that he had, quote unquote, evidence of you going into somebody's house? More defensive and more run away from telling him the truth. Okay. At 
sometime later in that interview did there become some conversation about whether or not you saw anybody or outside? Yes. Okay. And when that question was asked of you, what if anything was going through your mind when that question was first asked of you? When it was first asked of me, he had already stated that I had went into somebody's house that I didn't never go into. So when he said I had to see somebody outside, and I knew in my head that I had touched the woman, and I didn't want nothing to do with that because he would misassociate that with me as they're doing now, accusing me of killing her. Okay. And when he asked you whether or not you had saw anybody out there, what did you tell him? I told him I didn't. Okay. Was that the truth? It wasn't. Okay. What is the truth? The truth was that I was in the area. I never denied being in the area. I was in the area messing with cars. Upon my exit, I saw the woman laying on the sidewalk. Okay. And just to be clear, did you state earlier that you, did you w walked up to the person? Yes. Okay. And did you touch the person? I did. And what was your reason for touching her? I didn't know whether she had like fallen outside or was drunk. So me as a person, yeah, I'm out doing wrong, but I still wanted to make sure that you feel that this person was okay. When I realized she was dead, I wanted nothing to do with the entire situation. I'm a black guy in the middle of the night breaking into cars and I find myself standing in front of a dead white woman. That doesn't look good at all. Now you're an Alba Ant fan, but you three weeks worth of this trial in as well. You basically caught up. Now his jail phone call during trial to his girlfriend was also played while he took the stand. And man, he was livid about pretty much everything. But I want you guys to check out what he had to say. And let me know, do you think this guy is telling the truth? Or well, he definitely lying. I said, what did you just say? I said, what did you just say? Just by being a force. 
That's why I don't get in trouble. That's why I don't catch tickets. That's why I don't get parking tickets. That's why I don't get traffic tickets. That's why I don't do nothing. You kind of want to help to express it? Like, huh? did you get to speak? Did you want to speak? Oh, I don't get to do nothing. Oh, nobody, nobody can. Nobody can. Nobody can. Why? So why do they have 10,000 fucking witnesses? Nobody can speak. Nobody can do nothing. Bro. Nobody can say nothing. Nobody can do nothing, bro. That's not how that shit works, bro. And they were so dumb, bro. They so dumb. A nigga never even, a nigga never even washed the jacket, bro. The shit I was, if a nigga washed the jacket, bro, it wouldn't have been nothing on the fucking jacket. Like, y'all so fucking stupid. That's why it has been washed. It has, and I respect that. And I'm Mr. Jackson Blanas. We just heard the entirety of this um, conversation between you and his wife. Um, now, at any time, did you instruct Miss White to wash this jacket? No, okay. I didn't. At any point in time, did she tell you she washed this jacket on this call? Okay. Is this is this the first time you ever heard about her washing the jacket? Yes. Okay. And I'm going to play. Right there. Okay, I'm gonna play this, which is the follow-up call. And take four dollars. Michael and Will Jackson, Rico Milano's Wayne County Jail. An inmate at Wayne County Jail. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. If you don't wish to talk, hang up now. Thank you for using Telmate. No, 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 bro. Oh. At the toward, at the toward the end of our examination, bro, the nigga was like, the prosecutor asked, did, did the coat look clean to you? And she said, yes. It was not washed, because if it was washed, it wouldn't have fucking, it wouldn't have nothing on there, bro. Nobody did nothing. Nobody fucked with any evidence. Nobody did nothing. Nobody did nothing, bro. That's what I'm saying. That's what I have to know, bro. They telling me what you say could be used against me. Like, bro, what you say in the court of law could be used against you in the court of law. Like, bro, no, nigga, no. Nigga ain't do nothing, bro. I know the fucking truth. God know the truth. Nigga ain't know I didn't do nothing. God and me know I didn't do nothing. Nigga ain't do shit but go to the fucking park house that fucking night. Walk around downtown, bro. Take pictures of That shit weird to me, bro. That shit weird as fuck, bro. This my whole fucking life on the line, my nigga. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm just not sure why the fuck you're talking to me like this, like that is okay. No, because you just be saying anything, bro. Like, don't say nothing. You know, what the fuck? You need to stop cutting me off before I could speak to her without even a cutting I don't want to hear what you got to say about that shit, bro. It's no relevant. You're saying there's nothing to do with me. Fuck, my nigga. 
I ain't never been in no fucking situation where I gotta fight for my life to prove my I ain't got shit to prove because it's true, nigga. I'm fucking innocent. I didn't do shit to nobody. Nobody. The only wrong I ever did, that's the only wrong I did it, bro. Other than that, I ain't do shit wrong, bro. And they're realistic and fucking logical, bro. They're not seeing the fucking truth. They're not seeing it because everybody's being persuaded. Everybody's being can't make their own narrative. Well, this should be what the fuck you supposed to be a fucking job, bro. And right and feel right from wrong, bro. Don't be up here lying or trying to divert from what the fuck the question is being asked to say something totally different or phrase it this way. It's a yes or no shit, bro. That shit fine on this road, bro. Nigga, I may possibly never see nobody again. Nobody, bro. Nobody, bro. Nobody, bro. Nobody, my nigga. I ain't never had no bit and do shit, bro. Shit terrible, bro. A nigga fighting for his whole life at the age of 28, bro. Over some hearsay. Like you feel me? Like y'all paint the narrative of a nigga that's not even fucking true. Just stay warm, man. Just stay warm. Like I said, bro, no matter what happens to you. I would not lie to you, bro. I did not do this, man. I don't hurt kids. I don't hurt women. I don't do no weird shit, bro. And I love you with all my heart, bro. I love you with all my heart, bro. But I refuse. I refuse, bro. To be accused of some shit I didn't do, bro. I'd be punished for some shit I didn't do. I would never give these bitches the benefit of the doubt, my nigga. That, that shit Jackson 5 on my soul. That shit Juice World. Super Juice World. Like, man, I don't do it. I exit this bitch. I did not do, bro, and try to get back on the fucking appeal. Nigga, what, bro? I mean, logical, realistic people, bro. I need people to see this shit, bro. But these people is not playing fair, bro. They're not playing fair, bro. And everything that's saying that I'm innocent, bro. This shit is crazy. I don't give a fuck about that, bro. They feel pressed with trying to convict somebody or, or make somebody a suspect or make somebody a person. I'm not that fucking person, bro. Go holler at the first person. Go holler at somebody else that actually did this shit, bro. I love you, T. I'm gonna call you later, bro. I'm gonna to go lay down, bro. My fucking head hurts, my eyes twitching. I just need somebody to call the fucking news, bro. Something, bro. They got it in here. So they got their ears full blasting in this bitch. It's cold and brown shit in here, bro. It's cold as fucking here. There's no way we all with this bitch wrapped up in blankets, towels, all our clothing on, and there's no fucking heat in this bitch, bro. And the air blasting out full blast. 
Man, if you got this bottle, fam, there's something important I want you guys to know. This old boyfriend, or ex boyfriend, had admitted to being the killer. We was let go. He was given the meal for a statement and cook. I'm gonna chop his down to about six minutes, but he blamed it on his prescription meds and smoking trees. Hotel of Four Point Sheridan. And um, when you were at the Sheraton um, on the night of November 7th, um, can you can you explain to the jury what, what happened that night? Sure. Um, so I, I, f I finished work uh, that day. I checked into the hotel. Um, I took the... So at that point, um, I that was the second day that I was instructed to um, to double the dosage of authority, so I, I um, increased from, from one pill to two pills. Um, and I went out to, to dinner, um, and then I, I came back to the hotel. I uh, sat in my car. I smoked f four hits off of a vape pen. Um, and when you say you smoked, um, what, what substance were you smoking? Cannabis. And so would that be marijuana? Yes. Okay. And so um, after you smoked the cannabis, um, did, did something happen at that point? Uh, no, not initially. Um, I, I, I felt fine. I went inside. I bought a sparkling water and went to my hotel room and began listening to a podcast. Um, I began to feel abnormal while listening to the podcast. My thoughts began racing. Um, they soon became what I would describe as, as uncontrollable, that I, I couldn't stop worrying about things. Um, uh, initially, it was it was work related. I, I couldn't stop worrying about uh, that I had I had brought the wrong uh, clothes to work. That I, I wasn't going to make a good impression. Um, I was worrying about having to meet with uh, the director of the program, and um, and then my thoughts um, began to to focus around um, Sam's death. And um, and what specifically, what sort of direction did your thoughts go in regard to Sam's death? I I began to believe that I was um, that that I was responsible for her death. That I had somehow um, killed her and, and, and didn't remember uh, doing it, and I I couldn't shake. Um, that feeling, and it was it was disturbing to the extreme. Um, I uh, began to text. I texted uh, a few friends. Uh, I texted an ER doctor friend uh, about seeing a psychiatrist. I texted another friend that with whom I had spoken about psychiatry treatment. Um, I texted my, my psychologist saying that um, I was freaking out and um, I came to the conclusion that I needed to, that I was having a panic attack and needed to seek medical treatment. And um, once you reached that conclusion, um, did you call the police? Did you call 911? Um, so actually I, I took all of my stuff and, and recognized that um, that I, I didn't want my things in the hotel, and so I took all my stuff, put it in the car, went out to the car, and, and I called 911. Okay, and after you called 911, did you have some interaction with the police? Yes. Um, now, the, the particular types of uh, thoughts and sensations that you were having during this episode. Had, had anything like that ever happened to you before um, in terms of that type of episode? No. Um, and do you have any... Has anything like that happened since? No. Um, the particular drug that you were on at that time, 
Um, and, and again, remind me what the name of that was. Oh, Velody. Oh, Velody. Um, have you continued taking that drug since this episode happened? No. Um, when did you stop taking a belly? Immediately. And have you had any issues like this since then? No. Um, and um, before before this happened on November 7th, did you ever feel like you were responsible for Samantha's death in no. any way? Are you responsible for Samantha's death in any way? No. Um, do you have any periods of, of blackouts or unaccounted for time um, in any way? No. Okay. Um, and when you spoke with the police, did, did you say some things about feeling responsible for Samantha's death? Yes. Um, and um, you understand that today that you're testifying under something called uh, use immunity, is that correct? That's correct. And is your understanding that uh, that means that for this time that you're sitting in the witness chair that uh, anything you say can't be used against you in a subsequent criminal proceeding? Yes. Um, and you understand that to be entitled to use immunity that you have to be truthful in your testimony? Yes. Um, have you been truthful in your testimony today? Yes. Um, have you had an opportunity to review a recording of the 911 call that you made on November 7th? Yes. And when you reviewed that recording, um, did that recording uh, appear to be a fair and accurate uh, depiction um, uh, or reflection of the actual call that you made back on November 7th um, in Kalamazoo? Yes. Um, and I'm holding what's been marked as proposed exhibit 27. Is it your understanding that that recording is on this disc? Yes. Your Honor, I move to admit proposed exhibit 27. No objection. Proposed 27 will be admitted. We may have published. Is it more than 15 minutes long? No, Your Honor. The call is approximately seven minutes, and so perhaps we could maybe break after that. Uh, the, the next portion would be the body worn camera video of what he said to the police and that's going to be a little bit longer. Okay. That that might be a good, unless you have questions for him about that call. Oh. Mm -hmm. And again, just for the record, publishing exhibit 27.
are you able to recall what was going through your head at the time that you made that call? Just sheer panic. I, I, I couldn't catch my breath. My heart was was racing. Um, I was I was terrified. Okay, and um, after you found out about Samantha's death, uh, can you say what if any impact her death had on your mental health? It was, it was not good. I was I was devastated. Um, I would. There were days that I I couldn't get out of bed. Um, uh, I wasn't sleeping well. I was I, I, would, I would also sleep in the afternoons. I my sleeping schedule was was all off. Um, I took it very hard. And um, when you spoke with the police back on uh, that Sunday, right after the death. Um, your, what was your frame of mind like at that time? Uh, I just wanted to be as helpful as possible. Was that an easy position to be in, to be questioned by the police right after your ex-girlfriend had been murdered? It, it, it wasn't easy, but I, I didn't have anything to hide, so I um, wasn't worried. And is this an easy position for you to be in sitting here today testifying about this call and about the, the video that we're going to see tomorrow? No, this was a very difficult time. So fam, this way y'all play the juror or the district attorney. Because despite Jackson being acquitted on the premeditated murder charge, the Wayne County prosecutor, Kim Worthy, says she will press on for justice on behalf of Wool's family. Now, she also mentioned she will disclose her next steps on July 25th. Now, y'all let me know today how you guys feel about this one. But this was the story of a young woman who was stabbed in her home and, according to authorities, managed to make it out. And a young man from Detroit who looked to break into cars that night and stumbled across her body. Not to mention, the victim ex-boyfriend had admitted to it, but he ended up getting immunity and blamed his words for his prescription drugs. Let me know how you guys feel about this one in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Until then, I'll catch you guys on the next one.